Imagine an elephant the size of a dog, or a rat the size of a bear. These may sound like creatures from a fantasy novel, but they're real examples of a bizarre phenomenon known as the island effect. Described by many as nature's version of Freaky Friday, the island effect throws the rules of evolution out the window, transforming familiar animals into something truly extraordinary. But how does this happen? What other incredible creatures have been shaped by this unique evolutionary force? And what can the island effect teach us about the unpredictable nature of life itself? Imagine you're an animal stranded on an island. You've got limited access to food, but no predators in sight, or you have little to no competition and excess food. How do you evolve? Well, what happens to you is what we call the island effect, or the Foster's Rule. A fascinating concept in the world of ecology and evolution, the island effect questions how species evolve in response to their isolated environments. But what exactly is it, and why does it happen? Well, proposed by J. Bristol Foster in 1964, the island effect refers to the dramatic and often strange changes that occur in species when they're cut off from their mainland relatives by geographical isolation. These changes are often very wild and can range from body size to behavior to even physical traits. Regardless of what happens, they're all driven by the unique conditions of island life, like limited resources, the absence of predators, and minimal competition. Essentially, the species isolated on islands often face pressures that differ from those on the mainland, pressures that lead to bizarre evolutionary changes. This evolutionary change on the island is then worsened by the fact that the island's isolation limits gene flow. This simply means there's no exchange of genetic material with other populations, and as such, over time, the isolation would lead to the emergence of species with distinct traits. Ultimately, without mainland competitors or predators, the species may evolve in ways that seem strange to us, such as shrinking or growing much larger than usual. For example, on islands where resources are limited, some animals evolve to become smaller, conserving energy and surviving on less food. But on the flip side, smaller species on islands can grow larger due to the lack of predators, basically expanding their ecological niche. These shifts in size and behavior are perfect examples of how geographic isolation drives evolutionary change. Usually, there are two types of changes when a species is stranded on an island, insular dwarfism and insular gigantism. Insular dwarfism is an evolutionary process where large animals on islands grow smaller over generations to adapt to scarce resources. Think of it like downsizing in a tiny house. When food is limited, smaller sizes are often efficient for survival. And perhaps one of the most notable examples of insular dwarfism is found in the dwarf elephants that lived in Cyprus during the Pleistocene Epoch. These elephants evolved from larger mainland relatives, but significantly reduced their body size to adapt to the limited resources available in their confined habitats. Another close example is the Cretan dwarf mammoth, Mammuthus creticus, known to have a shoulder height of about 1 meter or 3 feet. This ancient mammal stomped researchers for years, as its continental relatives could reach heights of up to 4 meters or about 13 feet. For context, these mammoths could be a mind-boggling 75% smaller than their inland counterparts, simply because they lived on an island. This size reduction was a crucial adaptation, as it offered several advantages, including decreased nutritional needs, which allowed them to survive in environments where food sources were scarce. Another perfect example of this dwarfism was the pygmy deer, such as the key deer or Odocylius virginianus clavium of the Florida Keys. Located here, this subspecies of white-tailed deer evolved smaller body sizes, averaging just 24 to 32 inches or 61 to 81 centimeters at the shoulder as an adaptation to limited food and space. On the other side of the world, in Indonesia, smaller relatives of the Komodo dragon scientifically called the Varanus komodoensis, once inhabited smaller islands and, as per the island effect, shrunk in size. Like most animals on this list, these dwarf versions evolved reduced sizes due to limited prey availability and habitat constraints. We know this because while the modern Komodo dragon is a massive predator, fossil evidence suggests its ancestors included smaller, more resource-efficient forms. Even birds experience the island effect, with the mighty kangaroo island emu, Dromaeus baudinianus, and the king island emu, Dromaeus atta, being perfect examples of insular dwarf species of emus in southern Australia. As with all dwarfs, these birds were significantly smaller than their mainland relatives, with king island emus being about half their size. 
This reduction helped them adapt to limited food sources and reduced competition on islands. Sadly, both species became extinct after human settlements brought with them habitat destruction and hunting. Even the mighty hippo is not safe from the island effect, as hippopotamuses on islands like Madagascar evolved into smaller species, such as Hippopotamus limelae. These dwarf hippos were about half the size of mainland species, adapting to limited fresh water and food resources. Sadly, they too went extinct after humans arrived, likely due to overhunting and environmental changes. There were also insular carnivores, such as small foxes and civet-like predators on Mediterranean islands that evolved smaller sizes due to scarce prey. But like with many insular animals, these species often became extinct after human arrivals disrupted their ecosystems. Speaking of humans, even we went through the island effect, and the results were, in one word, baffling. Nicknamed The Hobbit after J.R.R. Tolkien's fictional characters, Homo floresiensis was a pocket-sized human species that inhabited the Indonesian island of Flores until as recently as 60,000 years ago, standing just over 3 feet tall with a brain size of 350 to 380 cc. These ancient humans defied expectations. Somehow, despite their small stature and having a brain size comparable to a chimpanzee, these ancient mini-men crafted sophisticated stone tools, hunted stegodon, aka dwarf elephants, and may even have controlled fire. For such a small package, they sure knew how to survive. But how did they end up so small? Well, many scientists think they shrank due to, you guessed it, insular dwarfism. So, in the end, what happened to these many men? Today, it is generally agreed that they likely vanished about 60 to 50,000 years ago, right around when modern humans, Homo sapiens, showed up in the area. Whether it was competition, environmental changes, or both, the hobbits couldn't hold on, and today are a reminder of how diverse our ancient family tree really was. On the flip side, insular gigantism occurs when certain species grow larger on islands due to unique ecological pressures. A good example of this ecological pressure is the absence of predators. This unique situation allows herbivores to evolve to larger sizes for more efficient energy storage and dominance in resource competition. Reduced competition in isolated environments is another unique situation that often leads to niche expansion, enabling species to thrive at larger sizes. Additionally, the stability of island ecosystems can support slower growth rates, resulting in longer lifespans and larger sizes. Perhaps the most famous example of insular gigantism is the famous giant tortoise, found on the Galapagos and Seychelles Islands. Evolving to massive sizes of up to 900 pounds or 408 kilograms and a surprising 4 feet or 1.2 meters long, these tortoises practically thrived on islands with no natural predators, and as such, their size helped them store energy during food shortages and deter potential threats. These herbivores shaped their ecosystems, acting as living bulldozers, spreading seeds and grazing vegetation. Ultimately, you might not be able to enjoy their presence, as many giant tortoises were hunted to extinction by humans. On the other hand, an animal you absolutely can experience is the Komodo dragon. Native to the Indonesian islands, the Komodo dragon holds the title of the largest living lizard, growing up to an impressive 10 feet 3 meters in length and weighing over 150 pounds 70 kilograms. With no major mammalian predators in its habitat, it evolved into the apex predator of its environment, preying on deer, wild boar, and even massive water buffalo. And as you would expect over time, its remarkable size and venomous bite made it one of nature's most efficient hunters. The Komodo dragon also serves as a prime example of the island effect. After all, this evolutionary phenomenon is visible in the two distinct species of Komodo dragons the modern giant we know today, and its smaller ancestors, which once thrived on isolated islands. In birds, a perfect example of insular gigantism was Madagascar's elephant birds. Now distinct, they were massive, flightless giants that could stand over 10 feet or 3 meters tall and weigh up to 1,000 pounds or 500 kilograms. These impressively large herbivorous birds likely evolved large sizes to access higher vegetation and deter predators. Extinct for centuries, they left behind giant eggs, some over 30 times the size of a chicken's egg. There was also the Hust Eagle, a native to New Zealand. This was the largest eagle ever, with a wingspan of up to 10 feet or 3 meters and weighing over 30 pounds or 14 kilograms. This particular bird was quite special because it evolved gigantism to hunt the island's flightless moa birds, striking with talons as powerful as a lion's jaws. 
Sadly, in the end, it's this very specification that killed it, as it became extinct around the 14th to 15th century, shortly after the moa vanished due to human activity. Leaving New Zealand on islands in Southeast Asia and the Pacific, giant rats like the Flores giant rat, Papagomis amandavillae evolved dog-like sizes, filling niches typically occupied by small mammals. Sharing the island with our ancient cousins, Homo floresiensis, these rats' size offered protection from avian predators and, to an extent, our ancient cousins, all while allowing them to exploit a wide option of diets. Insular dwarfism and insular gigantism are no doubt amazing phenomena that would at first sight leave anyone puzzled. But here's the thing, most of the animals we've spoken about are either endangered or extinct. But why? Is there an evolutionary trade-off for this natural Freaky Friday? Or was it just a massive coincidence? One thing we've come to know in life is that change is constant, but for animals who have adapted to certain environments completely, most times this change comes with a hefty price tag. Now, this is because island species are especially vulnerable to extinction. Their unique evolution in isolated environments, limited ranges, and small populations may seem perfect in the beginning, but all it takes is some variables to change, and the paradise they call home crumbles. And most times that singular variable is the arrival of humans. When humans arrived on islands, their activities disrupted these fragile ecosystems, often with devastating consequences. Besides the usual human activities and hunting, one major factor that has over time caused a lot of damage is the introduction of predators like rats, cats, and dogs. See, many island species evolved without natural predators, leaving them defenseless. For example, the dodo of Mauritius was driven to extinction as invasive rats and pigs devoured their eggs. And even if we don't introduce predators, we still have the issue of overhunting by humans. Naive and unafraid of people, island species are the easiest targets, as they don't see humans as a threat until it's too late. This is called island tameness. A good example is the happiest animal on Earth, the quokka. Overhunting drove animals like the massive elephant bird of Madagascar to extinction, as it was relentlessly hunted for its meat and eggs. In the same way, Galapagos giant tortoises were decimated by sailors who exploited them as portable food supplies. Now you might be wondering, what of the animals that weren't hunted? Well, those animals had to deal with the problem of losing their home as agriculture, logging and urbanization simply destroyed vital ecosystems. For example, deforestation in New Zealand eliminated the habitats of moa birds and the Hust's eagle. This was particularly worse for the Hust eagles, as they relied on the moa for food. On other islands, coastal development ravaged sensitive mangroves and wetland crucial for seabirds and crabs. While on other islands, newly introduced species further disrupted ecosystems, often outcompeting natives for resources. For example, goats introduced to the Galapagos stripped vegetation, leaving species like tortoises with nothing to eat, while invasive plants choked out native flora essential to many animals for survival. To make it all worse, island species often existed in small, isolated populations, and so a single disruptive event, whether over hunting, habitat loss, or the arrival of invasive species, could easily wipe out entire populations. So there you go, a crash course on the weirdness of the island effect. What do you think? Does the island effect prove that isolation can drive evolution into the weird and wonderful? Or is it nature's cruel trade-off for survival in a small space? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're pondering the mysteries of evolution, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to uncover even more fascinating tales from the natural world. Until next time, stay curious.